It's the latest in communication, entertainment, and exhilaration. The Acura MDX. Acura. Advance. In 1999, I moved to Los Angeles from New York. I found this very bizarre um, home that was built in the mid-80s with um, part of it underground, the subterranean level, and then part of it uh, actually this geodesic dome on the top floor. So as soon as I moved into the house in 2000, I started having this series of events where I would invite friends to come over and do projects, do performances. So last year when it kind of mutated into this Sundown Schoolhouse. So now that Sundown Schoolhouse has become itinerant and because now I don't live anywhere and just traveling doing these projects, the school just travels with me and the projects that I do always have some sort of Sundown Schoolhouse components. My book, Edible Estates, Attack on the Front Lawn, comes out in the next few weeks, actually. And so far, I've planted four gardens, and there's two more planned for the next two months, actually. So the first one was in Salina, Kansas, and then Los Angeles, New Jersey, London. The next one will be planted in Austin, Texas in two weeks, and then in six weeks, we'll be planting the one in Baltimore. During the wars, we had uh, victory gardens, and the federal government had pretty smart propaganda encouraging Americans to grow food on their own property since so many of the farmers were away at war. Um, so at that time, as I understand it, about 80% of Americans were growing some amount of food on their own private property. As soon as the war ended, that dried up, which is really the birth of the extreme American lawns as we know them today. The utopian fantasy of the project is that all the front lawns in the United States disappear and they all become replaced with highly diverse edible landscapes, each one different from the next, reflecting the taste of the owners. Animal Estates is my new ongoing project uh, where I will be making, designing homes for animals in cities around the world. The Whitney Biennial is um, probably one of the most important surveys of contemporary American art, which is held every two years here at the Whitney Museum. For this first edition of Animal Estates, the, the, the homes are actually at the museum, in this case in front of the museum on Madison Avenue. They invited me to do a piece specifically for the sculpture court for which I proposed this um, first edition of Animal Estates to be installed. So I've selected 12 animals that used to live on this exact piece of land at the corner of 75th and Madison. And on the Beaver Lodge itself is the uh, estate for the wood duck. In the center of the beaver pond, you'll see the white gourds, which are the homes for the purple martins. Um, this is one of my favorite views of the eagle's nest, which is up on the poured concrete uh, canopy entry to the Whitney Museum that Marcel Breuer designed. These are the trap nests for mason bees. So it's a whole bunch of two by fours put together with a grid of three eighths inch diameter holes into which the bees will nest. From the sidewalk, you look down into this forbidding space, which already seems like a, a zoo display. So I decided from the very beginning to have the series of bronze plaques around the perimeter that would identify all the animals. The exhibit is for the people on the sidewalk, and that's where the story of the project is really told. We have 12 dancers who are performing uh, movements of 12 animals who are my clients for the Animal Estates Project. So they'll be doing about a 40 minute performance of all the movements and then afterwards they're gonna go into the audience and teach the movements to whoever wants to learn them. Well, hello. I never thought that I would get through.
there's so much that's been um, disconnected in our cities um, from where we live to where we work, from uh, where we eat to where our food is produced. And I'm interested in all these different projects, especially with animal estates, finding ways that we can um, knit things back together. 